Hey, what's up everyone? This is Wolf from the Commander Duo coming at you with a video here on making custom cards through the Make Playing Card site, how to generate your own, um, and then how to make pre-mades. I know you guys have been commenting on a couple of the videos I uploaded. This video will give you everything you need to know about how to make them, how to upload them, getting the right settings, everything. So by the time you're done watching this, you should know how to make them completely and know exactly how you want to do things. And then from there, you can get as creative as you want. So I'm going to run through this real quick here. Let me just back out. So typically the way MPC fill works, this is the ones where it creates cards for you. If you don't necessarily need to do custom images, but you want to do some like altered images and you just want to pre-construct something really fast, this is the way to do it. Um, as an example, I will just do a couple cards. You just have to type them in how many you want and hit submit. Very easy. And then from here, you'll see your images. Um, it'll tell you how many different versions there are. So for forest, there's obviously a ton. You would just scroll through here, look at all your different options, and whatever one you decide on, you just select. So we'll just pick one. Uh, it's fine. It's kind of just an unstable version of an existing land. So, or I think that's actually how an unstable forest normally looks. Uh, all you do from here is just click on it and download the image just so you have it saved. Uh, sometimes people just do like not real, proxy, whatever. You can actually delete, remove that too, and it'll still be fine. Uh, they'll still print it just so you're aware. And I'll show you how to do that too real quick. So I'll do this as a quick example just to show you uh, how simple it is to remove that stuff. All you need to do is go on to paint. So paint will pull up, uh, and this is where you can edit it further. As you can see, pretty high quality image that was used, which is great. The higher the quality, the better. All you do, just take it, delete it, paint it in, hit save, boom, we're done. And they'll still print it, and now it looks a lot more clean. You can add whatever you want if you really feel like you need something down there. But that's all you have to do with that. Uh, moving on here. You can choose your other cards next, Soul Ring. There's a ton of different cool ones, you know, extended art, full art, things like that. You can also make your own. That one's pretty cool. Looks like it's like a Japanese styled one. I actually really like that. Um, again, you just download it. That's really all you need to do. These guys have, guys and gals for the most part, I think almost all of them already have the margins preset in, so you won't have any issues. And if you don't know what that means, I'll explain it when we actually design Misty Rainforest, same thing. So you just, basically you just have to spend some time picking out your images, download them. I usually put them all in the folder, and then when I'm ready to go, I do it. Um, next, I'll actually just show you quickly how to make your own card. Uh, it's called cardconjurer.com. Once you get on here, I'll show you the first thing you actually do before anything else. You just scroll down to the bottom and it says ready, get started. So this is a bit, it's, it's a lot to look at at first, but it really is pretty straightforward. So these are your different frames. So we're just going to do a promo tall art. We'll do an extended art frame. Uh, just choose black these are the different colors it doesn't matter what you choose um, just make sure it matches kind of the color you want to do these little things right here are for the power toughness that adds into the card got to have that for your uh, monsters or your creatures and then from here there's a couple different things you can do I like to actually set up all my frames first and then I just start working on the card afterwards um, otherwise when you go back and forth and add frames on the side it can be a little finicky because it auto loads whatever thing you're trying to do can get a little obnoxious so first thing I'm gonna do just to add some pizzazz after you've added a frame you can actually stack extra stuff on top of it some of the things at the bottom change the existing frame so like for example a, a floating legend crown is how you get that like more modern um, uh, card I think like with the legendaries they kind of have the, the more modern crown and then you can even take it a step further which is super cool and you can give it an inner crown um, like the like little galaxy Nyx thing which I think looks super cool on some cards so you can do that and then the last thing that's super important you don't want to forget this in the frames near the bottom it'll say 1 8 inch margin you do need to do this once you've added your your margin 
it adds that extra layer I was telling you about, because make playing cards needs this extra margin on there so it doesn't cut off your card, and essentially it adds that so that it doesn't actually cut into your card. So always make sure you do that. Um, now that we have our frame set up, we're gonna go with artwork. So one thing I've been working on uh, is I have a lot of, I, I love Overlord the anime. I think it's a great anime and there's some really, really good artwork in here. Um, so I'm just gonna pick one as an example. Uh, and then once you add the art, you can play around with it quite a bit. You can either drag it around to move it, but the way his program works is it tries to always just make it the exact size. So sometimes we'll run into an issue where you can't really move it to the left, right, up or down as much as you would want to, but that's a little bit dependent on your image. So as you can see, mine can actually go up and down quite a bit. It just can't go left and right. Now from here, you can also adjust it further with zoom, zoom in, zoom out. Depending on your image, you won't be able to really zoom out much, but here you can zoom in. So I could just set it to like 200 and then it's going to, it's going to zoom in quite a bit. You want to try to get the best quality you can too though. So, oops. So I'm not going to do it that much. So right there, you can see there's no gap in my image. It looks, looks good. Um, this also lets you adjust the up and down if you don't want to manually do it and you want it like super precise that's how you would do that so we're pretty much done with the image there next is our text you'll spend most of your time here manually putting things in now one thing that I recommend doing if you go to scryfall for your card let's just say we're gonna do only just because I was working with this earlier, Veto, Thorn of the Dusk Rose. I'll, whatever card you want to do, it's best just to go here and just start copy-pasting. Copy it's a lot quicker. So title, uh, we know his mana is too black. Um, you'll learn how to do these. There's actually a text code thing that tells you what everything is and how you can add special things. You do need to play with this a bit to understand. Um, but once you got it down, it's pretty easy. So what type of creature or what type of card is a legendary creature? So we just put that in, auto fills it, got your rules text. There you go. Uh, he's a one three. So you go to power toughness, one three, boom. So all of his stuff's already put in there. Now, if you want to add a custom quote, um, for example, if you were, if you're trying to be spicy and and get your lore right, like I would type in overload, or overload, overload quotes. Um, and then, like, it depends what you're doing, you know, if you're doing something for very, something very specific, uh, like I, I like this quote. Um, you just grab the quote and then you go back to your rules text. Now, it'll tell you how to add italicized text. It's just um, that symbol. So what you'll do is you'll add your quote, and it'll look weird at first, but just give me a moment and I'll show you. So you add that, and then you add the remove italicization at the end. What we'll at the end of that? Then you just put a enter, there we go. If you want the quotations in there, you can have them. I mean, it is a quote, just like, yeah, see, it looks kind of just like that. It doesn't have that line going through afterwards, but, um, oh, I think it's just this, if I remember, that does the bar. There you go. The only thing about it that's a little odd is it kind of really stretches your uh, text and I did choose a small text bar so when you do it you know just make sure you have everything set up the way you want it I think if I go like that there you go okay actually looks a lot better so that's essentially how you would get your flavor text in on there too if you want it with the divider and then all your statistics now we can even go a, set, a step further. You can do set symbols. I don't really mess with that. I do like to add watermarks, though. I actually have a custom one for Overlord because I'm making a whole altered deck. So I, that's the Overlord symbol. You can pretty much do any symbols that you want. Just make sure that the background of it kind of matches because if you do a 
like an image that's a black square with an image in it it's going to actually show the black square so you kind of want to look for transparent images so that's just an example of that and we're pretty much ready to download it one thing you have to do it says credit the artist it, it really doesn't matter what you put and i'll show you why in just a moment so essentially we download our card we'll uh go ahead and open this with paint like i said first thing i always do you don't need to have the wizard's copyright it just makes it even harder to get it printed um, and I've done this multiple times. That's all you need to do is just remove it, hit save. As you can see, my margin's up on there, everything's in, and you've created your own custom card. So now from here, I will show you the final step, which is actually designing it and sending it for submission. So for this, it's gonna be custom game cards. You can see it right on the main page, do start design. Now for sizing for standard magic and basically standard trading card games, it's 2.5 by 3.5, so you just click that. And then there'll be a bunch of things. Just click the first one, design your own game cards. Very simple. Wait for this to load. Now, this is the part a lot of people always ask about, like what kind of settings to use. You can use standard smooth or superior smooth. I haven't noticed much of a difference. Superior uses black core um, and it'll tell you smooth finish black core and then this is kind of like your standard blue core it's cheaper too so if you look at the price 1390 and then you go to superior 1570 so it's a couple bucks more uh just depends this is this is um how many decks so you won't need to have multiple decks unless you're making copies of decks but essentially if you want a full commander deck uh, like everything proxy you'd hit 108 or 90 if not everything's proxy I do this to be safe and then I just print some extra random stuff to go with it so as you can see here let's say we want superior smooth we're gonna go to premium uh, you'll just do full color print if you wanted to have a foil deck you would select holographic I personally don't like how dark things look um, and then for your finish you can go NPC for the standard beta and gloss gloss actually makes the cards pop more in my opinion it just doesn't look as magic uh, related it kind of looks just different um so i would say you're good with npc finish if you want beta it's a little bit more but only by like a dollar i haven't really noticed much of a difference it's just a little bit smoother feeling so yeah if we wanted to go standard smooth we're looking at 2385 cheapest option so you could essentially build a full commander deck uh, proxied of course for 24 dollars pretty much cheaper than anything you could ever do and you could have whatever cards whatever art and have it be tailored exactly to your specs so now we're just gonna do what most people do it's s30 and npc again like i said you can go s33 don't mess with any of the other ones they're not for magic um and just know it's just a few dollars more if you want a more superior card stock i usually go s33 it just feels more sturdy and it's a better core and it's only like three bucks so it's a very small difference now we just do start your design uh for this part you just put different images because all the cards are going to be different and now from here this is where you actually go ahead and import your cards there's a couple ways you can do it you can literally just click, click and drag and it'll upload or if you have your folder per se you can import the whole folder just by do it, clicking one of the cards hitting control all and then dragging it it will take a long time to upload just so you are aware so just just be patient with that it takes a long time especially when they're higher quality once we have all of our images on here all you do you can either click and drag them on or you can do help me autofill and it will automatically put all of your cards that you've scanned into here and uh, populate all of these slots and now if you want to preview and make sure it looks right it should um, this is where a lot of people are seeing problems when they don't do the margin so as you can see here the red lines are perfectly centered it covers basically my entire card and it, no it's not going to cut off where the red is but this is the most important part of the card the rest of it can sometimes have small issues um, and then 
yeah, having that extra margin ensures none of the actual card we want gets cut off. Because if I didn't do it that way without a margin, it actually looks really, really bad. So, and a lot of people struggle with that. You can also increase brightness from here too. If your card's kind of dark, um, you can increase the brightness a little bit. Like with that, it helps just a little. We can apply that. And then essentially you just go, obviously I'm not going to fill 108 cards, but you do the exact same process. Um, so it's going to tell you you have a bunch of blank designs, that's fine. I don't mess with this, this is just adding text onto your card with magic, you don't need to do that, so we'll just skip. Now this is, um, this is where you add your card backs. Unless you have different card back images, you can just press same image. I actually have one for this so let me just grab it real quick for overlord um, so it's very simple it's a black design um, just says overlord and white i just wanted to keep it nice and simple so we're done also for card backs if you don't want to make a custom one there's a bunch of pre-made ones people have done here that's just right off to the side on npc fill you just click on it and you can go through all of these different ones that's actually pretty cool i think that's somewhat new um, people have been adding more um, i can actually tell <laughs> there's been quite a few added i'd be careful with that pokemon one because uh make playing cards is a little iffy about pokemon stuff anyways uh, it might be fine though because it's still custom but uh yeah there's a ton of different things to choose from and all you need to do once you've picked uh chosen one a lot of people always like to do the black lotus one a couple of these new ones are actually really cool though but you just click on it and then just download it and then once you have that image you just upload it the same way um i showed you how to do the overlord one so yeah and then if you do same image it would apply all the cards to this back you don't need to add extra text don't need to put not for sale they just print them anyways if it's magic and then here would be a preview of what they would all look like as you can see all of the front sides are blank because we only did one card but if you look at it here um it will give you a preview make sure everything looks right you'll be able to view that's exactly how my card's gonna look it gives you a low res image of it but yeah so then from there you just hit next and you pay for it and uh that's that's pretty much it um, you can get very creative with customizing your cards and doing a lot with card conjure. Sometimes the site can be a little finicky to deal with. You just really need to play around with it for a while on your own until you really figure out how it works for you. But um, yeah, once you got it down, it's very quick and easy to make some of these custom cards and a lot of fun, especially being able to have like a themed deck that is from, you know, a show, an anime, a game, whatever you want it to be. Um, and yeah, just make sure like that you include all the original text and stuff so that the card still is true to what it originally is. But aside from that, that's pretty much all you need to do. If you have any other questions about anything, um, definitely let me know, but you should definitely be able to get a full project made and submitted after uh, watching this video. So I hope you guys enjoyed and have a good day.